So once I've got the clutter off this windowsill, I need to finish uh, that. And it's just been smoothed flat with a bit of render uh, to keep everything in place. I'm going to use pine floorboards, which we actually took out of this room. Uh, they're seven inch boards, I think, so I'll need to join them. And what I'll do is I'll probably rip two in half. And then, uh, so we have the join down the middle here. Try and hide the join uh, and we'll clamp that up. And then we'll just put a bull nose on the front here. So I want the windowsill to come out and overhang enough so it just butts up against this sink unit, uh, the vanity. So if I add 15 mil on uh, the sill depth at the moment. So this width, um, I'm actually allowing the width of the, uh, the opening plus a little bit extra just so that I can kind of cut round it and give the impression that it's a, kind of a, a more traditional window sill that cuts in. So this is how most of the old window sills in the house are finished. You can see this extra bit here and it's actually a bit longer than I, than I thought it was so I'll probably uh, try and recreate something like this. Just making up a template for the windowsill uh, just with some cardboard. Uh, what I'm going to do, I've still got to fit this trim uh, that we spoke to the wall each side of the window. I'm actually going to carry the window sill in a few inches. Uh, and that way, whatever piece of wood we put in here will sit down onto the windowsill. There won't be a, a join, a weak join. Literally just put a little tongue that will go into that gap on each end. Whether that will be too tricky to fit in once it's a rigid piece of wood. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Worst thing's worse, I can just uh, cut it off and then it'll fit in. And obviously it's one inch timber so it will almost come to the top of this bottom frame, which isn't ideal but um, it should be absolutely fine. It's actually, it should finish just below it. So all those old floorboards that I mentioned, I've been storing outside and they're a little bit damp at the moment because we've just had a rain uh, storm in the last day or two. So I'm down in the cellar and I think I've got a few boards down here. These shelves are actually quite nice. These are all made out of old floorboards, uh, or at least one inch timber. And they're quite nice, that join. But uh, I don't really want to start taking all that down now. But I did disassemble some shelves a little while back. Are these pine boards? I think they're long enough. And hopefully these will give us a nice square edge that I'll just run the plane over and then we can uh, glue joint those together. I haven't got a biscuit joint, so that'd be the best thing for it, but we're working with what we got. So I'll take these down, have a look over them. I don't mind the holes, I think that's quite cool. That's a pretty good straight joint there, bearing in mind these are 100 year old boards. So all we need to do is just plane them down quickly, glue them together. And then this is wider than what we need, but it means when we come to cut our piece, we can treat this as a uh, one board and we can cut out exactly what we want and leave that nice, neat join in the middle of the windowsill. All right, I've done my best. Um, you can see a little bit of light through, but I've planed both boards now. Um, the edges are nice and clean, so I'm going to glue them up, clamp them up, and leave them for a few hours. Well, that's the most non-precise glue up I've ever done, but wipe all this glue off with a wet rag in a minute. But at least uh, they're fairly flat, and remember we only need the kind of centre part of this anyway. Uh, but once it's all sanded down, give us a nice window sill. So here's the pine board. 
uh, that are glued up from two old floorboards. It's looking pretty straight. Um, we don't need the full width of it. And I put a line here so we'll set our template against that line and mark it off from there. Right, change plan, table saw is still uh, not accessible, so I've got this pellet stacked here and everything is in the way. Uh, so I ended up using circular saw along the front edge, um, using a, a straight edge to guide. So that's given us our nice square front, uh, which is the lip that overhangs the front edge of the wall. The rest of it doesn't matter as much. It's going to be up against the stonework and then there'll be uh, a ceiling or a cork along there anyway. So I'm just going to do the rest of this with the jigsaw and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so that's the general shape cut out. The only thing, I, like I said upstairs, is we may take off these bits that are going to go inside of the window if it, we struggle to fit it in. Front edge, I was going to use the round over on the front. Um, I still might, but the other option is just to run, just to take the edges off with a hand plane. <laughs> done, took longer than it needed to. This back edge here, which is taking a 45 degree there, which um, I did with a plane and chisels because uh, it's late at night, <laughs> don't want to wake up anyone. So uh, that will just help get it over the moulding of the bottom window frame. But apart from that, it's all looking good, some old nail holes in the join, which is all nice, give us a nice rustic look. and. All I did on the edge in the end was just a few passes with the plane and then sanded it and I think that should be absolutely fine. Oh, actually I might. Not bad. So it's not going back far enough. It's the only problem. Um, that's why I took that little chamfer off at the back. try and get it all finished tonight even though it's getting late. I'm not going outside again to get spirit levels so I've got a little lap on my phone and actually it's bang on that way and one degree that way so it just probably needs to come up a millimetre at the back and we'll make sure that there's no rocking at the moment there's a little bit of rocking just because it's a little bit uneven. Um, so I just need to put a little shim under here as well. This is just probably staining over the years because these are old floorboards, uh, whereas that's kind of the heart of the, uh, the timber. So I've got a honey colour stain which we've used around the house and I'm just really gonna put a dry wipe of that on there quickly and then we'll do the whole thing straight away in the Osmo in the satin which we've used uh, on just about all the woodwork in the house. stain with just literally a quick wipe along the bare face uh, and it's blended in a bit more and this is the main one we'll be using which is the normal satin finish 
Right, whilst I had the satin out, I did another top coat up on the beam. So that is completely finished up there. That's had a stain, a honey stain on it, and then the satin. And I'm just gonna put the satin on this one now, and then we'll be done. So let's get the final wipe down. So this, uh, this finish, we have nothing to do with the uh, Osmo, so this is not an advert, but it is uh, the ultimate in wood finishes. And it just goes so far. I mean, one roller will be enough to do this whole shelf here. Um, the window sill here. One tin is probably done seven doors and a couple of floors. So it's well worth it. So there it is, all finished and looking pretty smart. Next job is to finish the trim either side of the window, fit the radiators.